The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger of the around the OAA, um, one of the hosts of Last Three Brain Cells and also the host of Between Terminus on Orient Able Television. I'd like to welcome those hearing us on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. Um, and also, um, and um, we got a lot to look at, obviously. Um, a lot of scores this week. If you want to really look at the scores, um, we are have it on our sports ticker. A um, lot of interesting storylines have developed. Um, we're going to talk to the NPR. Um, it just the bracket match. The brackets have came out. The matches haven't been released yet. Um, so that's something to really keep a close eye on as we head into. Um, you know, we we're two weeks away from the start of the postseason in girls basketball. So that'll be really something to look at. Um, we've had district champions con wrestling. Um, Clark's in one of them. Um, I haven't looked at the others yet. I mean, I've been so busy. Um, past weekend, obviously. Um, of course, we had Ferndale having an incredible game of Grand Blank on Saturday. Um, North Farmington's blowout at Jackson. And then, of course, we've had um, a Saturday makeup, obviously, with um, with, um, Oak, with um, Ferndale University against Oak Park and girls and Oxford and Romeo and girls. So that's something to really look at. Um, a lot of storylines, um, as I mentioned, um, to really look at. Um, on the girls' side, um, obviously the MPR was released. Um, the how the order of matchups would be set in place. Um, of course, the top two seeds are going to get buyed. Are going to get the buys, and they're seeded. Um, and then the rest of the district is based on alphabet, um, which is A, B, C, D, whatever. Um, so when we really look at it here, and I'm looking at the districts right now, um, it's kind of really when you look at you know. And, I apologize if I have my phone out because I'm looking at the matchups here. Um, if you really look at the bracket here, um, if you really look at the bracket here, I do have it. Um, the bracket looks really interesting because, you know, when you look at in a five teamer, you know, if you're the top seed, you get to play C. Um, the team has a C. The A and the B play each other. That winner's going to take on the number two seed. Um, that is the five team district there. There's a lot of teams that have the five team district here in this bracket. Um, if you are in a in a four team district, we have one over at Birmingham Detroit Country Day. The one C is taking on the A, and the two C is taking on the B. Um, and then and then the six team district. A lot of people are in here. Um, you're gonna have the top C take on the A and take on the winner of the A and B side of things. And, the, and then the C and D will go against each other with that winner taking on the number two seed. So when you look at the schools in the OA, obviously, um, you know, a lot of teams fit in that between five and six seed category. Um, obviously, when you look at seedings, it is really important to really look at the seeds and the matchups here. I mean, like, um, and I'm looking at, obviously, one district you know in particular that that 16 district doesn't look really good good for right now and i'm gonna be honest with you stony creek's got a really difficult draw i mean if the matchups still hold i mean right now stony creek has the number one seed um in the lake orion district um followed by rochester i mean they got the number two right now lake orion is right there i mean like you know, it's separated between 395 and 379. Um, that was the NPR ranking right now. Um, if things hold in that district, it would be Lake Orion taking on Rochester Adams and then Utica Eisenhower taking on, um, and then Utica Eisenhower would take on Romeo. Um, the winner of the Lake Orion Adams match would take on Stony Creek and then the winner of the, of the, um, Utica Eisenhower Romeo game would take on Rochester. Um, if that were the matchups, um, Stony Creek has it really difficult because you look at, I mean, like, and that's very difficult 
And this is where I would severely disagree with the MHA and say, you know what? <laughs> see to everybody. Because the reason why I say this is because if, if Mark Yell's listening to me, I mean, take my opinion into consideration. Um, I would play, I would do it based on your record, on your NPR. <laughs> do it very similar to the playoffs. I mean, you look at the playoffs for football. I mean, the MHA ranks everybody, you know, based on playoff points. There's no reason why that you should not just rank everybody and get rid of this alphabet. Get rid of it. Because the alphabet really, it just really, you know, it makes no sense. I mean, imagine yourself this. If you're like a Lake Orion, for, 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 Lake Orion is a perfect example of this. They're 13 and 3 right now. <laughs> and you're, and they're having a great year. But since in the alphabet, they're A, you know, they have to play on that first day. And they have to play, and they would have to play the top seed. If it was a regular seeding format, Lake Orion would be the three seed right now. I mean, and they would clash with Rochester in the second round. I mean, so if you're Kellen James, you're, I don't know what you're thinking right now. I don't know what the heck you're thinking. Because you have done, I know the Reds been very difficult, but the fact that you're going to be the number one seed and then there's a possibility of seeing Lake Orion and Rochester Depending if you get by Lake Orion in the um in the um in the district semifinal and final, <coughs> that's really difficult. That really is. I mean, it's a really difficult proposition if you're Stony Creek. I mean, just seeing it. I mean, look at the other matchups. Obviously, you know, you look at I'm gonna look at the West Bloomfield that. The West Bloomfield District. Obviously, you got West Bloomfield, the number one seed. Birmingham, Mary, the number two seed. But you're going to have, basically, Groves take on Seaholm, and then Bloomfield Hills take on North Farmington. You know, with Groves and Seaholm, they use their whole name. They use the name, like, Birmingham, Groves, Birmingham, Seaholm, and then you have Bloomfield Hills, you know, and then you have North Farmington. North Farmington is the D team. So, if you're Coach Chris Massey and you're looking at that matchup and saying, I'm going to have to play North Farmington again, you know, I'm not looking forward to playing that matchup. I mean, going against Jess isn't. But on the other, on the flip side, let's say if North Farmington wins, you're dealing with Mary Cicerone. So, if you're North Farmington, that's a very difficult draw for you. I mean, Groves and Seaholm could be a really... I think that's going to be a really good game. It, because those two teams had a heck of a game at Little Caesars. Um, Groves won that game. I see them much improved this year. They're much improved. Um, in the think of a boo race right now, um, you know, with Harper Woods. I mean, so that's really interesting how that's shaping up. But if that, that would be the matchup right now. Groves would play Seaholm. Bloomby Hills would play North Farmington, and then the winners, of course, the winner of Birmingham, Marion, and um, the winner of um, Bloomby Hills and North Farmington would take on um, would take on Birmingham, Marion, and then the winner of Groves and Seaholm would play West Bloomfield. So that's another district to look at. I mean, and then when you look at the five teamers, obviously, when you look at a five team district, you know, if you're Oxford right now. You're in a really difficult spot. And the reason why I say this is pretty simple. Because if the bracket were to end, if, the, if that was a match right now, Oxford has the, would be considered the C team. And they would play Grand Blank, very similar to last year. Um, and then on the flip side, 
you know, cause, you know, Grand Blake is the number one seed. And then on the flip side, you have A taking on B. And right now, and then that winner will be taking on Davidson. That will be Lapeer and Flint Kersley. And then that winner's taking on Davidson. So it's it's pretty much if Oxford doesn't win these three games this week, and they could be in some serious, serious trouble heading into um heading into the district. And and then when you look at on other districts, obviously, you know, when you look at the Detroit Country Day district. Um, you got Ferndale University and Detroit Country Day likely having the top two seeds with North Far- with them um, with them um, Detroit Jalen Rose Academy playing um Detroit Country Day and then Ferndale University and Ferndale matching up. That's really interesting. It really is. Um and then when you look at other districts, um Clarkson and Waterford Kettering both have the um the top two seeds in their in their district over at Waterford um Kettering. Um, you know, followed by of course um Avondale taking on um Pontiac and then um and then um <coughs> and then the C team obviously taking on the top seed, which is Waterford Mott, and they would be playing Clarkston. Um so that is gonna be really interesting, um, how that unfolds there um over there um if those were the matchups so and then you know you look at a district like harper over at um harper woods you know you got st Clair short south lake who's having a really nice year by the way i mean really surprised about the cavalier season i mean they're not they're i mean like they're not bad i mean and then harper woods is the number two seed um but when you look at the possibility of having to play a Chandler Park or Detroit Denby, um, you know, Detroit Osborne. I mean, you know, that district, that's going to be really interesting to watch. So, and then, of course, you have the district over at Troy. I mean, you got Warren Cousineau followed by Troy. Um, then Troy Athens um, right now would be the three seed right now. They would be... You know, then you have Warren Woods Tower, Warren Ma- and Warren Mott in there. So, you know, when you look at Cousineau, looking at them, Cousineau will be playing Warren Woods Tower. Troy Athens will be playing um, Warren uh, Mott, and then that winner will be taking on Troy. Um, so that's a really, really interesting dynamic. Now, all these matchups could change, um, obviously. So when you're looking and Diject, dissecting these matchups. Um, other matchups, you know, include over at um at Detroit Renaissance. Detroit Renaissance and Berkeley are the top two seeds right now in their districts. Um, Royal Oak, um, I think Royal Oak's the D team in that in the um in that one. Oak Park, um, and then um Oak Park's in there. Um, and then you have Detroit Mumford, um. So it's a five teamer, um, for sure, which would mean which would mean Detroit Renaissance would likely play um Detroit Renaissance would likely play um it would get one of the top two seeds. Berkeley has the other one. Um I'm I think it's a five teamer. Um obviously Detroit Mumpers in there, Royal Oak. Um yeah, it is a five teamer. So that would mean Detroit Renaissance would play Royal Oak. And then Detroit Mumford would play um Oak Park and then that winner would take on um Berkeley. So really interesting setup over there, Detroit Renaissance. Um I mean it'll be really interesting to see what happens there, but these may not be the matchups, you know, because of you know, the MPR is still playing itself out. I mean, there's a lot of teams that are still making up games, snow outs, um, that are make making up some games. Um, obviously, you know, it'll be very interesting to see what happens, how, how it plays out. Um, really intriguing matchups. I mean, you know, but if you're, but when you look at the district over at, at Stony Creek, I mean, with over at Lake Orion with Stony Creek getting the top seed, but 
having to deal with possibly Lake Orion and Rochester, that's a really dangerous um, scenario for them. Um, and then you look at other matchups, um, you know, that they have upset traps. I mean, like, um, you know, when I look at the seeds right now, I mean, I am a little surprised that Sinclair Shore Salt Lake is higher than Harper Woods. But then again, I look at Harper Woods' schedule. Not really the greatest, not really impressive. Um, and I think playing those those um, teams that are under 500 have really hurt Harper Woods. And that's why they're the number two seed right now, despite their 14-1 and one record. So that's something to really look at um, there. Um, and then you look at, obviously, the... Um, and then I forgot to mention the Farmington District, the Farmington Hills Mercy District, of course, Mercy there. You got Farmington's there. Livonia Stevenson's the number two seed in that district, um, which that would mean... And then you have A&T's in there as well, which would mean Mercy be playing A&T. Um, Farmington be playing, um, would be playing... Redford Thurston, um, and that winner would take on, um, and that winner would take on Livonia Stevenson. So, you know, I forgot to mention that district, um, there. Um, but when I look at teams that look vulnerable right now, and these are that look really vulnerable, I mean, I'm not a fan of Livonia Stevenson. I mean, the reason why I say this is because I've seen Livonia Stevenson play, they're not a bad team. I mean, they're not, they're not bad. I mean, they got that win against Groves, which is really important. But if there is a team that can be primed to be upset right now, it's Livonia Stevenson. Um, I, I think when I look at that district over there at, um, at Farm Tales Mercy. Now, do I think, are they going to win the district? Probably not. Probably be Farm Tales Mercy that wins it. But, but, you know, you never know. I mean, like, you know, everything could change. I mean, this whole week could determine you know where you're gonna be at because i know the final week of the season the matchups are already set in stone so you know really if for an npr purpose you know if you want to get games in you know get them in this week because because like because that that's gonna really count for the npr when you go in into the postseason i mean that's the one you really got to look at so Obviously, when you look at teams that could be upset, that look vulnerable to upset, um, another team I, I talk about is probably going to be Harper Woods because when you look at Harper Woods, you know, the schedule they played really haven't been the greatest. Um, but you really look at the realization of having to play, um, you know, Possibly against St. Clair Shore South Lake in the district finals. Um, that's a possibility against St. Clair South Lake in the district final. Um, I just don't know if Harper Woods has been tested enough. And you look at St. Clair Shore South Lake, they've been battle tested enough. I mean, obviously, you know, that could be a team that could be, you know, they could be a team that could give Harper Woods big problems. I really do. And I also think another one that could give him problems is obviously Harper Woods Chandler Park Academy. So if you're Harper Woods in that district, I'd be a little on, I'll be a little worried if you're Coach Paul Allen. If you're Coach Paul Allen um, in, in the Pioneers, I'm a little worried. Even when we got home court. But it's still, that district, you know, there's some, there's some hurdles you got to get by. Obviously, you know, going through, you got to get by the Cavaliers, obviously. But now, you're going to have to deal with, um, likely have to deal with Harper Woods Chandler Park Academy. Um, that is a really difficult matchup if that were to occur. Um, a team that can make the most gain is Oxford. And the reason why I say Oxford is pretty simple. Because they're, they need that number two seed. Because you look at that. That's a difference from playing Grand Blank, from seeing Grand Blank in the second round to playing him in the in the district final. And you really look at the strength of schedule component. They're not far away from Davidson. They're really not. I mean, you know, if they can win 
three games. If they can win those three games, um, that loss to Berkeley was an absolute killer for them. Because, yes, Berkeley's a good team, but from an NPR standpoint, it was an absolute killer. I mean, like, you know, losing by nine that game. Um, they bounced back, beat Romeo 31-20 um, on Saturday. Um, but if there is a team that has a lot to a lot to gain, it's Oxford. I think, you know, especially with that with that district. Um, Grand Blank played Davison um earlier in the week with Graham last week with Grand Blake winning that. Um and Davison, you know, Davison battled hard. I mean, like, Davison's not a bad team. Um, but when you really look at a team that really needs a number two seed in the worst way possible, it's Oxford, considering, you know, you're going to, it's either, it's a difference from having to see Grand Blank first from, or you could pl- get that number two seed and play either, you could play either, Davison or Flint Kersley. So that is a difference maker if you get the number two seed. And then that would basically set in Slapier to have to play Grand Blank in the first in the second round. And we know that it would be it would be really interesting if that were to happen. But if there is a team that can make some significant grounds, it is um it is Oxford if they if they can win all three of their games this week. So that is something to really, really keep a close eye on um, as we head into the final stretches of the regular season. So, you know, a lot to look at, um, a lot to really look at as we head into the final stretch of the season. Um, This week's surprises. Um, You look at obviously the, um, you look at obviously, you know, the white division race is still, you know, um, going on between Rochester and Lake Orion. But Berkeley's now become a player. Um, now, for Berkeley, they got Lake Orion and Rochester this week. So that's something to really keep a close eye on is can the Bears, you know, can the Bears, you know, win out? That's going to be the key. Um, obviously, they've won seven straight. I mean, that is really incredible what they've done. Um They've had some good wins, um, and I think that's a credit to Coach Cody Feltner in his first year there. Um, also credit to the players. Of course, Ashley Luna's really started to play like a superstar. Nova Malvez had a really nice, um, had a really nice, um, you know, st- that has been playing really well. Um, Ava Beard's not a bad player. Sammy Withrow. Um, you got the play of Jillian Gomes. Um, Maya Jones is another one. I mean... You look at Berkeley, I mean, they've got, and when you look at their district, I mean, like, yes, they got to go to Detroit Renaissance, um, and we know Detroit Renaissance is a very good team, but if there's a team in that district that I think that can match up with Renaissance, it's Berkeley, because, yes, even though they don't have the depth to match with Berkeley, with Detroit Renaissance, and the schedule, they, they haven't played the schedule as Detroit Renaissance has, but I think if there's a team that can, that can match up the Shane Laws team, it it's the Bears. I mean, like, it's the Bears. I mean, you know, Berkeley, they've done a really nice job. Um, you know, especially Loon. I mean, like, Loon's been a really, really talented player. I mean, obviously. And then you add um and then you also add um Ava Beard, you add a um Sammy Withrow. I mean, you know, Jillian Gomes has really played well. I mean, Maya Jones has really played well for them. I mean, like you look at Berkeley, I mean, they, I mean, like, who, why not? Why not Berkeley? Why not the Bears? You know, you know, I mean, like, they've had an incredible, incredible year thus far. They've had an incredible year thus far. So it's something to really keep an eye on. Um, uh, Maddie Sikorsky getting her thousandth career point, um, at Clarkston, um, in a game against, um, against West Bloomfield. I um, want to send out my congratulations there. Um, obviously, when you look at the red race, it's pretty much over. I think West Bloomfield has pretty much got the division locked up. Um, and then the blue division, it's still between Harper Woods and Seaholm. Um, 
obviously the um the pioneers have been a um you know the pioneers and the maples obviously have been you know the two teams they're going to be getting ready for a clash at the end of the year um down in harper woods so that'd be really something to keep a real close eye on um for the blue title between the um pioneers and the maples so that's something to really look at as we head into the um final stretches of the um of the girls season um let's go now from girls basketball and then i want to bring up boys i mean you know i mean the girls have a lot of great storylines right now going on as well but the boys have been more interesting and the reason why i say this is because you look at clarkston clarkston's a perfect example because what happened in their game against what Cameron Ainsworth was absolutely shocking um and I think a lot of people around the state were saying to themselves when they saw that score Friday night in Flint that said Flint Carmen's Flint Carmen's worth 53, Clarkson 33. And I'll be honest with you, I was shocked when I saw it on Twitter. I was really shocked because I didn't see that one coming because, you know, Clarkson, we know they've been. They've been very. They've been the consistent of high school of basketball in the OA. They've been the consistent. They've been very consistent, and for them to get blown up by twenty points, it was very unusual. And finding out, you know, Keegan Wasilik injured his ankle first four minutes of the game, you know, and uh, and he didn't come back and return that game. That's a difference maker right there. When you look at Clarkston, you know, Keegan Wasilic does so much on the floor for them. I mean, he'll rebound. He'll, he'll steal the basketball. He's like a, he's like a floor general. You know, he's like an, another coach on the feet, on the court. You know, that's how Ke I view Keegan Wasilic. I mean, like, I mean, like he is a, truefied leader and to see him go down like that um really hurt them in that game it really did um but also they got some injuries too i mean Desmond Stephens is hurt um i know their guard situation's been a um it's a mess and i know it puts a lot of pressure on players like zach austin nate steinman and of course um blake cozen you know it puts a lot of pressure on them even Kavanaugh didn't. I mean, like, you know, there's a lot of pressure on uh, on them, you know what I mean, to carry the load. But Keegan was Silic, you know, the injury to him, it's 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 stunning. I mean, like, cause he does so much, so much of the little things on the floor for Clarkston and the C and they're a different team without him. And it's showing that game against one of Carmen Ainsworth. Um, Wasilic had a really nice game against Groves on Monday night. He had a really nice game. Now, it's unknown uh, how long Wasilic will miss. But, I mean, like, it could be he could be back next game or he could be back before the, um, before the postseason for the districts. I mean, you look at Clarkson's chance in the red, they're pretty much done. I mean, like, I'm sorry. And they still got to play Oak Park. You got to play Adams. You got to play, you know, Oak Park and that. You got to play North Farmington. I mean, like, those are very difficult games looming for Clarkston. And if the Wolves don't have Keegan Wasilic, and if he's out for a significant amount of time, that could be some trouble. I mean, like, and then you look at that district, you know, looming with Water Vermont, I mean, like, in there, which I, I just... I'm completely baffled when I looked at the NPR um, that Waterford Mott was ahead of Clarkston in the NPR. And, you know, and I, I was, I'm, I'll be honest with you. Do I think if Waterford Mott and Clarkston were to play, if Clarkson was healthy with Keegan Wasilic, Clarkson beats Waterford Mott, I would say by 25. Because of, because Wasilic balances everything out. You have Steinman who can shoot it. You have Austin who can shoot it. Uh, Dighton's a, a workhorse in the interior. Um, 
Cozen, we know, is an inside-out player. Um, Jacob Beck's not a bad player as well. Um, but if healthy, Clarkson basically wins this game pretty convincingly. Um, even the game against Point Cameron Ainsworth. I mean, like, when Wasilla got hurt, Clarkson was up 11-3. I mean, they were up 11-3. I mean, so that tells you how valuable Keegan Wasilla gets on the floor. That really does. Um, so I don't know how long he'll be out, but I hope, but sooner the better for Clarkston. You know what I mean? If he can come back on the floor sooner, um, ankle injuries are usually a really tricky injuries. They're really, really tricky injuries. So that is something to really keep an eye on, um, uh, with Clarkston is the Keegan West Silk injury. That is something to really keep an eye on. Um, obviously other teams to keep an eye on, um, Oak Park. I mean, here's a team, you know, I know Vuana Miller, Ashton Henderson's been playing really incredible for, um, Coach Duran Shepard. Um, with them, you know, it's just stay in the course. I mean, I, to me personally, if there's a team that could threaten to, the, threaten UAD Jesuits, it's Oak Park. The reason why they... The reason what happened to them last year was because they messed up on a four point and gave a four point play at Detroit Renaissance against UD Jesuit. They should have beat UD Jesuit. Um, that needs to be the motivating card for them. I mean, that should be the motivating card for them. Now, yes, UD Jesuit and Detroit Renaissance are in that district. And I think Oak Park can beat both those teams. But it'll be very interesting to see and they're still, they still control their own destiny in the, um, in the red race. They got to go to North Farmington. That's never an easy trip. Um, they got to go to Clarkston, uh, even though it depends if they have Keegan Wasilic in there. Um, and then, and then you look at Oak Park and they got a very difficult district that awaits them. I mean, you know, so I'm very curious to see how they line up. Right now, they have the number two seed. Them and the Detroit Renaissance are battling it out for that number two seed. Um, if they don't get the number two seed, that's pretty bad because I think they would be the C team in that district. Um, either the C or the D. I mean, like, that's something to really look at. Um, in, and that would be really interesting for um in that district if they don't get the number two seed. So that's something to really keep a close eye on. Um MPR wise when it gets released next week. So obviously that is something to really look at. Um on Oak Park's case. But Ashton Henderson's been playing really well. Um I hope he gets some consideration for Mr. Basketball in the state of Michigan. Um, I obviously know Travion Lewis is going to get a lot of, a lot of mention as well. He and Jason Drake both combined for 20. I mean, both at 20 points each in their, um, overtime loss to, um, Grand Blank on Saturday at Davison. Um, of course, when you look at Ferndale, um, for them, it's going to be, can they get by Detroit Country Day? That's going to be the big key. If they can get by Detroit Country Day, um, and we know the Yellow Jackets have a lot of experience, a lot of senior heavy experience in that district's at Country Day. So if you're Coach Juan Rickman, I know you played a very tough schedule. You played a very difficult, you know, you played against some of the best teams in the state. I mean, you played against some of the best teams in the country. Um, but if you do not get out of your district, it's a very disappointing year for you. That's the bottom line. Um, now, Ferndale would have to go to Country Day. And that's not an easy place to play. Um, obviously, um, and especially with Detroit Country Day having 12 seniors on that team. Um, so that's something to really look at. Um, I think if there's a team heading in the postseason that has the most pressure on them, it's the Ferndale Eagles. Because last year, this team reached the Final Four. They went to the Final Four in Division Two. They, and there's been 
championship aspirations over there. And when you look at a team that is that wants championship aspirations, yes, you're going to have some really good teams you're going to have to deal with. Um, of course, a lot of people look at that game with Hyper West Chandler Park Academy. Unfortunately, it didn't happen last year because of COVID. Um, I mean, like, what could have been there? You know, Ferndale had to survive that double overtime game against Croswell Lexington. I mean, and then they ended up losing in the state semifinals to Grand Rapids Catholic Central. We know how good Grand Rapids Catholic Central is this year. I mean, they got a lot of experience. They're talented. I mean, you know, so if you're Coach Juan Rickman, you know, and you have all this state championship talk, you know, for me, for them, for me, it's put up a shot. You know what I mean? That's what, that's what it is. And I know Coach Juan Rickman is saying that. I know there was a team. You know, you talk about championship aspirations. This is a, this, you got, you talk about championship aspirations. I mean, this is, you got a, I mean, you got the red basically all, all wrapped up. Now, if you want to win a state title, you're going to have to make sure everything is situated. And everything starts for them with focusing on Birmingham and Detroit Country Day. You know, I know everybody says take it a day at a time, but I know they're thinking about Detroit Country Day right now. I know deep down those kids are thinking about Country Day right now. I mean, and that's pure honesty. I mean, that's pure honesty. Um, other teams to look at, obviously, you know, we talked Clarkson already. We talked Oak Park. Um, North Farmington, they're, look, they're in a really nice spot right now. I mean, yes, I mean, like, I know they've had some struggles as of late, but I really like where the Raiders are at. I know that regional is very difficult for them. They should get by their district. Um, but when I look at the Raiders, um, you know, North Farmington's a team where I think could be a very dangerous team, um, come postseason time. And I think the reason why I say this is because, you know, the Raiders, nice district. Um, you know, I, I really think Coach Todd negotiation has got the pieces there. Obviously, Ryan Hurst, Landon Williams, he had a really nice game against Jackson. Um, and then you look at, um, you know, you got Aaron Rice who's there. I mean, like you look at, um, you know, they got some good pieces over there at North. For me, for no, for me, it's for North Farmington. Their mindset should be, you know, we got a chance. You know what I mean? To do pretty well, finish strong in the red, and then get ready for the. Um, then you should cruise by your district um, without any problems, and then you have that regional ahead of you, which is really difficult. So that's something to really, really look at um, going forward there. So that is something really, really difficult to go for there. Um, when you look at obviously the white division, um, and we look at when you look at um a t another team to watch is Adams. I mean, I'm gonna go back to the red for a minute here. Um, Adams is another one to look at. I mean, you know, Adams, despite their record, this is a deceptive team. I mean, this is a very deceptive basketball team. I mean, they got playmakers. Justice Mims, um, Brady Pre scored. Um, I mean, John Ursey. Um, I mean, and then you have Gunnar Walters. I mean, you really look at Adams. I mean, like, you know, they had a really tough two point loss to Oak Park. Um, they're getting better. I mean, I really like, for me, with Adams, you can't judge the win-loss record. You really can't. Um, you got to look at, okay, how's their experience? How is everything looking for them? Um, Adams, they have the number one seed in the, in their, uh, in the Romeo district. Um, now, Lake Orion's going to have a say about that. But I think when you look at the NPR, you know, Adams... They're looking pretty good. I mean, like right now, they're. I mean, they got that win at Clarkston, um, which is huge. They got Clarkson coming to Adams. Um, they got um, I mean, like they've already played North Farmington twice. They've already played Oak Park twice. Um, they've already played Ferndale twice. Um, so when you look at Adams, they got a favorable schedule coming up. I mean, really favorable schedule. Um, they've taken their lumps. 
And, you know, this Adams team, they're going to be fine. They're going to be fine. Um, so I wouldn't press any panic buttons on Adams yet. I really wouldn't. Um, but Adams right now, if I'm Coach Jared Thomas, you're in a really nice spot right now. Um, West Bloomfield, really struggling. Farmington's really struggling. Um, you know, those are teams, you know, um, really struggling in the red right now um, as we speak. Um, let's go now from the red to the white. The white is an absolute mess. Um, you look at, um, it's a three-team race between Bloomfield Hills, Groves, and Lake Orion. Um, Lake Orion's got Groves and Bloomfield Hills having to come to their place, um, which is going to be really interesting. Um, but I'm curious to see how they respond after losing by 11 to Groves in Beverly Hills. Um, they were due. I mean, to be honest with you, they were due. I mean, you know, I mean, like, you know, with win streaks, you know what I mean? Sometimes, I mean, like, you know, it's good to have a loss, you know what I mean, in your column. Um, just to humble you and get you better, you know? But they got enough. They got enough talent pieces there. They got enough talent. I mean, Alden Ritt, DJ Morrow, Malachi Granberry, um, obviously. Um, they're going to be fine. I think Lake Orion's going to be fine. Bloomby Hills put up 86 on Stoney um, the other day. Um, obviously... You know, Noah Adams, Carson Brodsky. Um, you you got others as well there. I mean, um, you know, DJ Lee. Um, you got um, Ben Canty. Um, obviously, um, when you look at the Blackhawks, I know their district's going to be very difficult considering you got um, you got Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, and Birmingham Brother Rice in there. Um, but... I think they're going to be fine. And then Groves on the flip side, obviously, you got um, Aaron DeBose, Nick Lurtz, who's been playing, um, who played better against both Clarkson and Lake Orion. He had two really nice games against both those two teams. Um, and then, you know, obviously, Quentin Steele is a very important part of that team as well. So, really, you know, those three, you know what I mean, Groves is relying on um, for Coach and Benny White. Um, Troy's been playing better. Um, been up and down. Um, you know, I'm curious to see how they're going to do in their district, even though Warren D. is in there. So it'll be a really tough task for them going forward there. Um, and then Stony Creek, we know it's been a struggle for them. Um, it's going to take some time for Coach T. Norgrove. Um, they got a young team, very, very young team over there at Stony, but they're getting better. I mean, they, they, I mean, they're getting much better. So, Something to really keep an eye on. The white is a three-team mess right now between Lake Orion, um, Bloomfield Hills, and Groves. Um, Lake Orion, I think, is in the best, better, and is in a um, is in a really good spot with both those two teams having to come to Lake Orion. Um, Bloomfield Hill, I mean, like um, Groves is in a really difficult spot because they got to go to Bloomfield Hills and Lake Orion. So, so, and then Blue Bay Hills, obviously, they got Groves at home, and then they got to go to Lake Orion. So, that's going to be really interesting to keep an eye on these next final three weeks of the season there in the white division. Um, and then let's look at the blue. I mean, like, the blue, that, the blue's a mess. I mean, the bottom three teams in that division won on Friday over the top teams in the division. And how it's very odd, you know, Berkeley does control their own destiny in that division. But Oxford hasn't been consistent. Rochester, Rochester, I know the injuries have killed them, but I'm just looking at Rochester and going like, they have completely fallen off. Um, I I mean, like, and, and they better turn this around before it's too late over there at Rochester. Um, and then you look at... Um, a and is a weird team to figure out when motivated they play well. Um, Seaholm starting to play a little bit better, which is a good sign for them going forward. Um, and then Athens has been really, Athens has won three straight, which is ever since the um, Seaholm disaster. So when you really look at, when you really look at this division, who wants it? Who really wants it? I mean, I mean, Berkeley looks to be right now the team that controls their destiny. Seaholm is second, followed by Oxford, um, 
Athens. And then um and then um, there's and then there's A and T. I mean, it's a weird division. It really is. But if there's a team right now that controls its own destiny in that division right now, it's Berkeley. Now, MPR wise, I'm looking at the MPR for Berkeley. I'm going like five eighteen. What? This is a team that's won a lot. This is a team that's won almost twelve games this year. And the fact that their NPR is 518? Are you serious? Where's the love for Coach Joe Servo's team? Where is it? I mean, Berkeley is Berkeley is one of the teams in the blue. You know, they control their own destiny right now. I mean, you look at obviously Oxford, you know, Oxford. I mean, I know Oxford Oxford's been not consistent. I mean, they've really struggled as of late, which is a concern. Troy Athens, they've won three straight. Um, and then you look at, um, and then Southfield's a great mystery, but Seaholm's second in that division right now. Second. <sighs> but if you're Berkeley and you're looking at the NPR, realizing that, you're the lowest team in there at 518. Something's seriously wrong. Something's wrong. I mean, I don't know what it is. So, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But for Berkeley right now, they control their own destiny in the blue. Um, I know they got, I know, um, but... Right now, I mean, like, if Berkeley, if they, all Berkeley's got to do is keep winning. If they win, if they keep winning, they win the blue. Um, but they're the team right now that has the, that controls their own destiny in that division. So that's something to really look at. Um, and then in the gold, um, it looks like it's starting to, to, um, really figure some things out. Obviously, Royal Oak to me has probably the most, equipped in this division. Um obviously um I really like the play of Dylan of um of Mr. Hoffman there. Um Jesse Holdick has had a really nice um nice um he's been playing very well. I mean Clark Hampton, I mean like he's really stepped up. I mean like Coach Aaron Smith's got some playmakers. I mean he really does. And Royal Oak right now controls their own destiny in the gold. I mean this is a team, you know, they've taken their lumps. They've taken, they've taken a lot. But don't, also don't sleep on Harper Woods. I mean, Harper Woods right now is catching fire at the right time. And that's a good thing if you're Coach Tawan Porter. Because this, back in early January, Harper Woods was absolutely awful. I mean... But they have managed to catch fire. And that's a good thing if you're the Pioneers, considering what you have looming ahead. So if you're Harper Woods right now, you know, you've won, I think you've won four straight. Um, you got to keep this momentum going. Um, obviously, when you look at the Pioneers, um, you know, being the new, new team on the block, the new school on the block in the OA, it's going to take some time to adjust. And I think Harper Woods is starting to figure some things out a little bit. And you're seeing it, which is a good sign for them going forward. So right now, I would say Harper Woods is the second best team right now in the blue behind Seaholm, uh, behind Royal Oak. Um, and then you look at, um, obviously, um, you got Avondale's been playing better. Uh, Pat Clancy's done a nice job with that team. Um, Pontiac <laughs> with da with Davion Hall. Um Pontiac needs more besides Davion Hall. And the fact that they I mean Davion Hall, he can win in games by himself. We know how talented he is as an athlete. Um I know the sky's the limit for this young man. But when you look at Pontiac, you know, you can't just rely on one guy 
to carry an entire program. You can't do that. That's not going to win games. Really isn't. So that's something to really keep an eye on there. Ferndale University, um, obviously, um, coach um, Josh Nix has done a nice job of that program. Um, do I think Ferndale University could be a team that could um, do some damage in the postseason? Sure. It depends on the matchup. Um, obviously, but I really like where um, Coach Josh Nix has his program going in his first year coaching the Eagles. Um, you know, last season, let's not forget, Ferndale University did not win a game last year. They really did not. And you really look at Ferndale University. And, you know, they have, they, it helps when you have experience. It really does. But when you're trying to build a program, Rome is not built overnight. Really isn't. So that's something to really, really consider that right now. Really to consider. Um, do I think that there's some gold teams that could do some damage in the postseason? Um, when you look at the district, um, I would say if there's a team that could do some damage um, from this division, um, I would say um, I would say Avondale might have the best shot. Maybe Pontiac, just because of the district they're in. Um, Royal Oaks got a really difficult district. They're in a really difficult district. So is I mean, like, um, and then. Um, you know, Harper Woods got a really tough district with St. Clair Shore, Sot Lake in there. Harper Woods, Chandler Park Academy's in there. Um, and then you look at Ferndale University. Obviously, you got Ferndale and Detroit Country Day in there. Um, you know, Royal Oak, obviously, with UD Jesuit, Oak Park, Detroit Renaissance, um, and Berkeley. I mean, really, really difficult position for them postseason-wise. So that's something to really look at. Um, from the blue side of things, obviously, Southfield is going to have to deal with North Farmington. Um, and then you look at um, Troy Athens, you know, Warren D. South, Troy. Um, you know, you're dealing with them. Um, Oxford, that district over at Grand Blank with Grand Blank, Davison, um, Lapeer. Um, those are teams to really look at, keep an eye on. Um, and then you look at... Um, and then obviously you have Seahome, obviously with that district with um, Warren D. The Sal and I'm uh, sorry with them, Orchard Lake St. Mary's and um, and um, Birmingham Brother Rice. Then you have Groves and Blue Bay Hills in there as well. Um, and then you look at the white. Obviously, you know if there's a team in there that could do some damage in that district, in the district, Lake Orion's got the best shot. I think from the white to do some damage. Um, maybe Troy. As well, um, I think Lake Orion and Troy had the best shots to do some damage in the white. And then the red, we talked about that earlier. I mean, so it's really, when you look at the team, the boys teams that could do some damage in districts. Um, obviously, you're looking at a lot of teams in the red, but teams from like the white, the blue, and the gold. Um, I think if there's one team that could do some damage in districts come postseason time, it's Lake Orion because of, They've been there. Um, they got the playmakers um, and Alden Ritt, um, Malachi Granberry, and and um, DJ Morrow who could do some damage there um, postseason time. Um, so it's really something to, besides the teams in the Reds who can do some damage in districts, it'll be Lake Orion. Um, Troy is another one. I mean, home court matters. Um, so really, really, those are the teams to really watch for. Um, Really to really watch for um, come postseason time um, when you look at the districts. Um, wrestling, I like to send my congratulations out to um, the um, to um, district champions. Obviously, Clarkston winning the district at Lapeer um, really was the um, really was the um, you know they knocked off. Um, Oxford, who's we know Oxford, they what they went through, and then Lake Orion, um, and then Lake Orion, um, so something to really keep an eye on here. Clarkston, they get the very tough task of having to play Davison in the um 
in the regional fi- in the regional finals at Traverse City Central. That's gonna be really difficult. Um, Stony Creek won their district. Um, they get to play Romeo. Um, they host the regional, which is gonna be really interesting. Um, with Romeo there, that'll be really interesting. Um, that's a very tough draw too. Um, and then when you look at um. Other other schools here from the OA, uh, Blue Bay Hills taking on Farmington. Um, that'll be an interesting one here. The one one of those schools will get to go up and meet, go to the regional final. Um, over at Heartland, the winner's taking on your Heartland or Wild Lake Western. I think it's going to be like the Heartland. Um, Heartland we know has been very very good in wrestling. Um, so it'll be really it'll be a tough challenge for both either Farmington or Blue Bay Hills to um to um get there. Um, and Troy, I mean Troy, they host their own regional. Take on Warren Mott. Um, that winner is taking on either Warren Woods Tower, Gross Point South. Um, in that one. Um, and then in Division Two, obviously, you know, I'm just seeing, I'm just seeing the bracket here, obviously. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of teams in wrestling that are still in. Um, a lot of teams in wrestling are still in. Um, obviously, um. Just seeing if Ferndale or Pontiac moved on um, to the um, Ferndale is actually in um, at Birmingham Brother Rice. They get to take on St. Clair Shores and Lake Shore. Um, should win that, but I think Birmingham Brother Rice will win that one. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens there um, going forward there. So those are the teams right now that are in wrestling in the um, regionals for the team side of things. Um, so something to really, really keep an eye on. Um, cheerleading co- districts, I think, start this week, which is going to be really interesting. Um, of course, the top four teams go to regionals. Um, something to really keep an eye on over there. Um, you know, so cheerleading districts, really interesting to keep an eye on. I think hockey postseason starts up really soon as well. So there's a lot going on, um, this week in the, um, a lot going on, especially as we close out February um, and get into um, in the spring, which is going to be really, it's coming by fast. I mean, spring sports coming out real fast. So something to really keep a close eye on. Um, when you look at um, other sports um, around the OA, um, a lot of storylines still to go. Um, something to really keep a close eye on. All right, now before I sign off here, um, um, I know a lot of people have been really, um, you know, it is what it is. So we'll see what happens. Um, I mean, like, got a lot of basketball storylines. You can follow the blog at um, Saginaw Bay forty six fifty at blogspot dot com. Um, the NPR, how that, how that was, I talked a lot about in link with the girls today. Um, surrounding how those matchups are going to be. Um, obviously, as I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned earlier with the NPR, um, I'm not a huge fan of it, um, but it is what it is, and we have to go by that system. So, the boys side of the NPR will be released, um, ne- this upcoming weekend, um, and then, um, the match will be released, the girls will be released next week, the boys the following week, so that is something to really keep an eye on as we head into the final you know, as, as the matchups do get announced there. Um, for me, personally, I wish they would seed everybody. I think it would make a lot more sense if they seed everybody. So, you know, I, I, like they do in the NCAA tournament, they seed everybody and just, you know what I mean? And that's it. You know what I mean? See everybody, everybody's happy. So, we'll see what happens, um, how they do with the meetings and all that. So, that's something to really keep a close eye on. Um, in the future. I mean, I know people talk about shot clocks and all that. We'll see how it goes. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care, everybody, and I will see you next week, everybody. Take care. God bless, and see you all next week. See you later.